I'm excited for this next bit. Okay, we got Brian Polito coming on. Okay, Coffin Comics, creator of Lady Death, Hellwitch, Evil Ernie. Yeah, I'm excited. Let's chat with Brian and see what he's got going over at the Coffin Comics headquarters. Oh my gosh, we got Brian <laughs> Polito here. How's it going, my man? It's going great. How you doing, man? I'm doing Kirby hands. You're doing Kirby. We need right. some crackle on the screen. It would be good to go. All right. How you doing, everybody? Thanks for having me, guys. Dude, it's so good to be here with you, Brian. You got some awesome stuff going on. And you know what? This is podcast number 15, and you joined us on podcast number one. So yes, this that's is a, right. a fun little anniversary. I have some stuff to talk about, actually, in the anniversary theme today. Brian, we have yes. you here. This is a kind of a fun week to have you on because it's been a week filled with Captain America news. Why, and yes. The first thing I wanted to chat about is about Chris Evans. This week, he yes. said he prefers Thor's hammer over the shield. What are your Whoa. thoughts on that? That's now look I, in the beginning when Chris Evans was hired, I was I was skeptical, but I thought he really proved the case. But Chris, you might have crossed the line. Cap <laughs> Shield is the one and only. I think actually the compromise is Shield plus Hammer. But even so, even if he says that, he's allowed to because I'm watching the movie. I'm watching Endgame. In that moment when he was able to pick up the hammer. I was like a five-year-old kid. T literally, tears came to my eyes, and I'm looking around at everybody. I'm like, that's my dude, man. That, you see? You see? You see? So we all knew it. The hair and I, I was even right? surprised at my own reaction, you know, how emotional it was for me. The Avengers <laughs> Assemble, I would think I was mouthing it the whole time, oh, waiting for yeah. him to say it. it was, it's exciting stuff. Well, it's a, yeah. the, I would go for Cap's shield over Thor's hammer, personally. Yeah. I think the Cap, Cap yeah, shield's yeah, pretty no. dope. What I like the hammer. I can fly with the hammer. And boy, man, when he was wielding that and put that into perspective, because he was a freaking master with that hammer instantly. He was. And then we did get to yes. see it in Thor 390. He did get to pick up the hammer, so we got to see it in comics as well. That's right. True. So I just yes. loved, um, there's always the the round shield, which is so classic, but gosh, having the power of a thunder and flight. I mean, that shield, whether it be in the movies or the comics, has withstood some of the most outrageous power, energy, villainy. So, I mean, I think there's just something to it, you know, that the vibranium, adamantium combination, there's something that makes it extra special. We have an anniversary this year for you. I want to know what this uh, date means to you, 1974 in August. Well, 1974 in August, is uh, that was probably the first time I picked up a Captain America book. And that happened to be 176, and it was the Cap No More cover. And for some reason, it really called to me. I, I even remember the place and the time. I lived in a place called Long Branch, New Jersey, and there was a pharmacy down the road from where I lived, and they had a spinner rack. And there was something about that particular book, and I read it. And interestingly, begins a storyline or comes to the end of a storyline where Cap is disenchanted and turns away from being Captain America. Yet that's where I began to read Captain America. And I have literally never stopped reading Captain America since. I've read Captain America, graduating high school, poor college student, post-college, poor post-college guy student, through the thick and the thin, through the storylines I enjoy, through the storylines I don't like, you know, to the present day. I have... Literally, nothing has prevented me on, on earth from missing an issue. I was hoping you'd say that because this week we had more Cap news. What's coming out? Disney Plus with the Falcon and the Winter Soldier has announced a character named John Walker. Yeah, he's coming in, and this is something yeah. that I'm, I'm excited about. He's the super patriot. He's trying to be Captain America, but just not in the right way. And I'm, I'm pumped about right. seeing this. Start out in issue 323. Right. Yep. Yeah, correct. And this was a 25th anniversary. So I think it's funny that you mentioned that you got into Captain America when he left the mantle. This is right around the time where he left the mantle again. He did. It's interesting. I mean, a couple thoughts on that. If you read Cap, there is a long history of other people trying to take on the mantle being Cap, whether it's uh, Bucky did it for a while, like way back in the day, or other people who are imposters trying to represent who Cap is. What makes John Walker interesting is... He's been kind of uh, enduring. So he has a degree of endurance and he started out a super patriot and then he did go to a U.S. agent. That's right. So we'll let's see where he evolves to next or how they're going to bring him into the party. I do have to say something about Marvel anniversaries. So I'm going to say two things, if I may. So 25th anniversary. So what do they do? They introduce a guy other than Captain America to be in the book. I always find these types of anniversaries kind of crazy. I figure when it's an anniversary, it's time to overdo with the character you, you love. This is tangential, but if you think about it, when it was Marvel's 25th anniversary, which I believe was in 1983, I think, they introduced the new universe. So to celebrate their 25 years of comics, they just introduced a bunch of comic books that ultimately no one really wanted. So 
guys, pro tip, when it's your anniversary, just give us more of the thing that we want. Don't change the script up. Oh, I appreciate you going over some cap stuff with us. It's not every day that we have cap you know, information coming out. And in, the, in particular, with Chris Evans not playing Captain America, <laughs> it's like we're getting a show about cap without caps, and they're yeah. adapting um, runs from, the, from canon without them. So I'm, I'm interested to see how they, how they handle this. It's interesting because we know there are a big question mark who's going to be Cap. So that's just I think that's a really exciting way to start this because there's so much confusion and just so many ways you can go direction. He could be the wrong Cap, but accepted as the Cap, and then that has right. to be dethroned and another Cap. So it's really interesting what they could do with the story on that. Yeah, that's a fun storyline too because it's not actually being portrayed as Steve Rogers, Captain America going bad. I, I'm fine with that. I'm one of those guys where Secret Empire, I was like, uh-uh. Not happening? Uh, well, especially for two years. You know, yeah. I mean, I, I'm fine with, you know, I've seen these great storylines that are two or three issues. I could go with that. But like 24 months and then Tom Brevoort actually said this was always planned since the beginning. And it was just, for me, it was just like, nah, <laughs> not my guy. But of course, it turned out to not be the guy. So, uh, but I, I don't, I... I'm like you guys. I've been very intrigued by how the Marvel Cinematic Universe unfolds. And I have to say, as a Cap fan, their handling of Captain America so far has been incredible. And if the last time we see Evans as Cap is Endgame, I'm actually completely settled with it. Although I must admit, I would love to see more Cap, you know, more Steve Rogers Cap. And then since, you know, you started this, Tom. So my other thought, because I have a lot of thoughts on this topic, if someone else has to be Cap, the two guys clearly are in this order. It'd be uh, it's Sam Wilson and then it's Bucky Barnes. That's how I see it. And then everybody else, no. Yeah, let us know what you think, comic fam. Do you agree with Brian Polito? I'm on your side, Brian. I want to see <laughs> Sam. I want to see Bucky. You know, I'm happy with either. I'm a big Falcon fan. But yes. Brian, Hell yes. Witch the Forsaken. Hell Witch the Forsaken. This is epic, man. I'm excited to read this. Thank you, man. Chapter two in Hell Witch's Life in Hell. We're going back in time and we're watching the formulation of a supervillain. Her mentor believes that she has too much compassion and empathy. And this is the story that poses the question, can she lose it and become the evil she was meant to be? This Friday marks the this end of the Kickstarter, Friday. correct? This Friday, November 22nd at 7 p.m. Arizona time, which is Mountain Standard Time, we close the campaign. So you now, as of this moment, just have a few days to jump on board. This 48 square bound graphic novel is something I'm excited to read. Reasonable facsimile of the cover by the incredible Mike Chrome. I think this really gets the attitude of this book across. It's just unrepentant, lusty creature. You know, I'm a big fan of like vengeance stories. We chatted about Crow at, yes. uh, I think it was San Diego Comic-Con this past year. Yeah. And reading about this book that's coming out and then also seeing all the variants that you're putting out with it. It's just got me super pumped and I wanted to show the community. Um, and you know, we're big supporters of Coffin Comics and the whole crew over there. And thank um, you for that. Of course. Well, my favorite <laughs> variant from this set is the Lucio Perillo variant. This is the actual cover. This is a mock, an incredible piece. He's such, he is the right artist for a character like this. You know, to be honest with you, and this is part of the tier, I must admit this is a risque one, not for everybody, but for the people who like it. And then finally, this was his sketch. All those together form the set. Um, and those those are limited to 60 and serial numbered. So let's ruminate on that idea. But in a world where print runs are 15, 20, 35,000, 60 is ridiculous. 60 is ridiculous. And you also have a variant that is going to only be available <laughs> to under 13 people. To make things even more ridiculous, we did an edition called the Metal Legend. And this is a mock-up, but it is a metal comic book cover with the comic and it's limited to 13 serial numbered copies, 10 of which we're adding throughout all the reward tiers. Oh, Starting, anyone can get them, right? Anyone who backs the physical Kickstarter non-digital rewards are eligible to be part of it. And so you have so many of these little chase items in that cross all so many tiers. So anybody can really jump in at any price point and get this, which is really fantastic. And you like that, that jewel one. <laughs> this is, I've never seen it before. So, but I love the fact that you have a cover 
that has jewels embedded in it, like Swarovski crystals, literally. Actual Swarovski crystals. This is a beautiful Nathan Zerdy cover. It'll be limited to orders on the Kickstarter plus 10% for lost damage. <laughs> Never seen that. <laughs> That's crazy. He's always coming up with the new variants, man. That's right. That's awesome. And I, I'm sort of led by just my joy. You know, I think I've talked to you, Tom, and you know that I've just been, as a fan or a collector, I've been in the game since 1974. So I just try to always kind of let my joy and excitement for collecting and just the love of the hobby and the art just sort of shine through somehow so i think that's where all this stuff kind of comes from well it's awesome i mean it's already uh backed right now it's funded yes. and only a couple yes. days left for the community to get involved um link in the bio to pledge to support coffin comics and to get yourself some really dope comic books so I, I want to chat with you about a couple other things. We're going to reserve that for the after show today. So okay. make sure to follow us, Comic Fam, on iTunes, SoundCloud, Stitcher, or Spotify, because we got to chat about another Cap book, kind of, Captain America 3. Yeah, I mean, Captain America 3 is first published work of Stanley, and Stanley just passed uh, a year ago, this just week. this last week. So let's chat with Brian in the after show about some Stan Lee stories and. I'm going to make sure I get this right. An untitled extreme horror project that I think if you're a fan of Evil Ernie and Lady Death, you're going to want to hear about. That's absolutely right. Brian, thank you. We do appreciate you. The pleasure is completely mine, guys. Thank you for your time and your generosity. So before we go, just like to end with the Kirby hand. And remember, geek responsibly.